What's up everybody and welcome back to another agency tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be going over how you can plan properly for building your template actually. Where I see a lot of people fail is they don't are not planning all of the content, text, images and everything like that for their template and they're jumping directly into the build. I feel like this is a really wrong approach and this way you're not gonna create a, like a really custom and unique copy for your website and tell your brand story in the proper way. So we're gonna be going over five steps. The first step is gonna be planning your content and gathering all of the images and like basically texts you're gonna use on the website and planning the pages you're actually gonna use. Then in the next step, we're gonna be compressing all of the images we need to use on the website. Then after that, we're gonna try to design our own logo. Uh, just because this is gonna be the basic build and the branding is gonna be a completely different area from this We're just gonna be going in Figma and then outlining a logo that we're gonna use on the website itself After that, we're gonna be designing an open graph image Just because I see a lot of people forgetting about that and it's a really important step when you're share sharing your website On any social media, LinkedIn, like Facebook or whatever So we can have a really unique open graph image that's gonna be shared with every single page and then finally, we're gonna go, go ahead into finding your own font and then adjusting it. So adjusting the template itself is gonna be looking great. So let's jump straight into it. Go ahead and like plan for the content you're gonna use on the website. I strongly suggest opening a Google Doc. I'm gonna be showing you now how one of our clients actually went ahead and planned the content for the website in an amazing way. And then we basically went over and migrated that into design and then into Webflow itself. So we can see that on the homepage and really good thing about a homepage is that it's labeled. So we have one, we have two, three, four, like we have all of these sections that we want to feature. So they went ahead and created a document that has all of the copy needed. So we have uh, one, two, three, and then we have the copy they're going to be using. So we have like, we're against yeah, we're telling interesting stories and create experiences. In their case, on their live website, they created, we work with compelling clients to create spaces that tell, that tell the, their story. So we can see that they want to have a homepage. So this section, this section, this section, we're going to link to the projects. We're going to link to the about. We're going to feature these projects. So deciding on like, okay, what pro project do I want to feature? What images do I need to get in order to feature these projects? So in their case, you can see like, these are the projects they wanted to feature. And they went ahead like uh, planned where was that, like how many images do I have at that place, what's the about the descriptions I have for that, and then created a whole document about that. Then after that, you're going into finding what pages actually you want to use, because for some use cases, you actually do not need to go ahead and use all of the pages. You might want to use a single pager, which I'm going to be showing how to adjust in this tutorial or you might want to do something else and like use about contact and projects, but maybe not use the process and the blog as you don't have really the content for it. So in their case, you see like about, we're going to be using this. What we do, we're going to remove this section. We're going to be adding our values in a drop down. We're going to be uh, explaining our process and we're going to be adding our theme. So you can see the same like things added on their live website here with all of the content right in the doc. It's gonna be a lot easier in general to go ahead and develop the website if you do not have to worry about content and you're just worrying how you can implement everything we just said. So in my case, I'm gonna be creating a draft portfolio for like myself. I went ahead and like plugged all of the copy that I wanted into the template itself. It's a Figma file at the moment. Uh, when you buy a template, you can send us a message over email with your template preview link, and we're gonna be able to send you this Figma link for free, uh, like as an addition, if you want to go in Figma design and then only develop the, the template itself. So you see that, you see like the beginning, the learning phase, I changed the headings, uh, like this is zero one, but here like I, I added the beginning, then I added the learning phase, then I added like the current, I added one more section, so I plan for my copy that I'm gonna need to add one more section. And then I added like who I've been working with, some of my projects, plan like what projects do I want to feature actually on the homepage. Like what do I want to have as a main call to action. In this case, I'm gonna be building a one pager. So I'm gonna be like, want to work with us, contact us here. Then we're gonna be having the brand guide, like the useful links that I like completely repurpose the original component. So you can see that in this case, the component was like, here are our awards. But on the design itself, we actually went ahead and added like all of the useful links that you might want to use on the template itself. 
and yeah in the end like the footer itself so that what that we can adjust after that done we actually need to prepare a folder with the images we're gonna use so in my case i like separated some of the images that i really like to use here um and then we need to go on like uh png compress or like jpeg compress you can actually go ahead and search for a lot of these tools online and compress our images I see a lot of people forgetting about this step and you end up like with images like around two megabytes, three megabytes, like and like maybe even more than that. And the end users, especially on mobile, are going to have a really hard time actually opening that up. I suggest like compressing your images to a size under 200, 300 kilobytes and then only then go ahead and uploading them to the template itself. That's gonna be like for SEO reasons, it's much better as the speed load times are gonna be get like a lot better and then uh, later on Webflow is actually gonna be adding lazy loading to those images so they're gonna be working a lot better also so after we go ahead and decide okay well, uploading the files and then like opening all of those up and uh, uh, like importing here so this is a JPEG we cannot upload a JPEG we need a, G uh, a JPEG converter one more thing is you can go in Figma actually and resize the images themselves to a smaller size so if you had a professional shoot or something like that the images are probably gonna be like, like I don't know, like some crazy sizes, 10,000 by like 7,000 or whatever, I don't know. But you can actually compress them to 2x the size of what you actually need and like save on the size of the image that way and then go ahead and compress the images themselves. So that is that for this one. In the third step, we're gonna be going over designing your own logo. So there are a lot of other tools like you can use Canva or something like that to go and design your logo in a pretty simple way. And then you can go through the wizard and create your own logo like this. Like there are like a lot of a lot of different logos that you can use. You can change the copy and just basically export them as PNG and use them on your website. Um, the thing I actually did here is just I used the font that I was using here. Now we're gonna go into the next step and like basically go ahead and use the logo itself, uh, the font, find this font I mean, and then basically from that font I just outlined the text. So I'm gonna be having Orshmikic. Then like main component, uh, let me just restore the main component here. And then for the logo that I'm going to be using, I'm going to just go ahead and outline the stroke for the logo itself. And that way I can use this like as a PNG, as an SVG ideally later on in the build and have that ready to upload to the website itself. So that's done. Up to the step four, we're going to be designing the OG image. Where I see a lot of people like forgetting about that is like when you go ahead and copy this, to Facebook and then you want to paste this in you're gonna see the agency like default open graph image showing up and a lot of people actually forget about this step and they end up with their own website share it on the social media and like not not a really good showcase that everybody knows that you've been using a template for your website so uh, we're gonna be designing that we're gonna be using Figma Figma is free you can actually just go to Figma and like start your own account uh, log in sign up and everything and just use it for this short step you can go ahead use one of your images like completely like this i don't know if you want to share the share that you can like paste in your color maybe and then write like this hero og image and like copy in some sort of a hero and then like in my case i might want to reduce the size of the font let's say this is going to be a font composition for us to work off of and that way we have a really cool op open graph image. So instead of this against the open graph image showing up, we're going to be using this one and then exporting. Let's save this OG image for later. We're going to be needing that. And then like the fifth and the final step is going to be finding like what are going to be your brand colors and what fonts are going to use. Uh, I like to when I'm adjusting templates to completely change the font and change the brand colors. So then the whole uh, template gets your unique brand experience pretty easily uh, with like low efforts uh, from a development side, but you get a really unique product. So uh, depending on your budget, you might want to go like for paid options. Some of the paid options are going to be Pangram, Pangram.com. If you want to go ahead and like buy a font, you have like that, you have Google fonts. And then like, let me try to search for some more like we can use like adobe type kit also but one of the real gems like these are the paid ones if you have the money to spend like on the logo on the fonts but what i like to use is use this like fontesque and then you can go and search for all fonts and check this ofl open font license and search for it 
This way, you can see a lot of unique fonts that you can use on your website completely for free. They're open font license, so you're not going to get in trouble for using them. And you're going to get like top of the end fonts. Sometimes they have only one weight. They don't have a lot of them. Maybe the line height is a little bit broken. But in general, we can go ahead with it because we're developing the website in with the template and use those. So I actually went ahead and did like the same thing. And you can see the logos that I've decided to use. This is going to be the New York font. So if I go ahead and search for New York. So this is free for personal use. And then the next one is going to be like, let me just find. This is going to be the greenhouse one. So we use this one and then we use the uh, this one. Let me just find it. Search. Mm, so this brunette, like I don't know why the original file name is called like greenhouse, but this is the font where we're, we're going to be using. So you can see in the end, like it ended up looking really nice and like modern, but we're not using the, the template uh, like with the fonts. So it has a unique feeling. The next thing, like you can go ahead and like on Behance also find some fonts that I like. Like I, I was searching on Behance also a lot of times to find some free fonts in general. Sometimes when they get out, they're free. But the really one more thing that you're going to probably search is on Dribble and find a color scheme you're going to use. So let me just like search for maybe agency website and find like maybe this is going to be like this is completely different, like using a gradient. Maybe you can see like this, a unique template coloring and like try to like grab colors from here, screenshot them and use them on the website on your end here. In my case, I went ahead and like stick pretty much the same. I changed two colors. We have this greenish one. We have like this another shade of like it's not green. Like I don't know how to call this color dirty white and one more shade in between and from that i went ahead and changed everything so i'm going to be showing you that in the next part of the tutorial on how you can actually go ahead and change everything and play around in figma but for this uh we're pretty much done so we went ahead and like planned all of the content in a document like this we found all of the images we're gonna use we compressed all of them so we can upload them we got our logo and then in the end the final step was finding the font and some brand colors we're gonna use on the template this was it for this tutorial and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.